Okay, we're starting off with number three in Connect. We're going to look at, I've got five that I want to look at. The first three are going to basically be, the first one is the operating section just by itself. And then we're going to have one with just the in, investing and then one with just the financing. And then we're going to go into a, uh, a, a complete example that does all of it for the, in, for the, and these all first three and the complete example are all going to be the indirect method. And then we're going to do one and flip it and do the indirect method or the direct method. Uh, remember, the only difference with the direct method is the, uh, the first section, the operating section. So we're going to do one of the direct method at the end. So the first one here we're going to look at is number three. And it's only going to look at the operating. And we can only do the operating because they only give us our current assets and our current liabilities down here in the balance sheet. Even it's and the balance sheet is very condensed. Obviously, all they give us is the amount of increase or decrease with the year. They don't even tell us what the beginning and ending amounts are, but that's okay. We don't need them. These are the important numbers, the increase and decrease, just like I showed and we had in the lecture example. And then, of course, we need the uh, the income statement to know if the, what the net income is, and then those two items that we need to get out of the income statement and reverse if they're in there, which is the depreciation and any gain or loss. And we are going to have both of them in this one. All right, so let's start out here. We come down and we're gonna start off with the statement of cash flows. Remember, we always start with our net income. And our net income in this problem is the 481 by 40. So 481 by 40. And then it says here, okay, what are the income statement items that never affect cash? Remember there we have two of them. The depreciation expense, let's put that in. The depreciation expense of 44,200. And you may wanna, this is where you may wanna keep your notes back up and go back up to that uh, cheat sheet page. It's gonna take you a little bit of time to remember these and if cash goes up or down. So with this one, with depreciation, no matter what it is, depreciation always adds back to the to the to your cash to your net income number. So the depreciation, we're going to have it as a positive forty four thousand two hundred. So I'm going to put here the depreciation expense and a positive forty four thousand two hundred. The only other item is if we is there any gain or loss, and we do we have a gain. And we go back to my cheat sheet. And if there's a gain, think about it. A gain makes your net income go up, but we didn't get extra money. It's just we had a gain on, based on our book value. So if we have a gain, then we need to subtract and pretend it wasn't there in the income statement. So we're going to come down here. We're going to put on gain on sale of the equipment, and we're going to do it as a negative for the 6200 And then that's it. That's all we have to do for the income statement items. They give us extra items here, but we don't need to do anything with them. There aren't anything, to, there isn't anything to do. Now we're ready to go to the changes in current assets and current liabilities. So we've got an asset, inventory is an asset, and then these two are our liabilities, two of each. Account receivable went up. All right, let's look at our little cheat sheet notes. If any current asset goes up, that means it's a negative to cash because we're not getting the money. It's still in our customer's hand. They owe us. So I put down here account increase in accounts, in, in accounts uh, receivable. There we go. And since it went up, our cash actually goes down by the 30500 which is right here. And our inventory, it went up. So we're gonna do an increase in our inventory. And since if whatever one, whatever one current asset does, they're all gonna follow suit. So if, since the account receivable was a negative, this one's also gonna be a negative because they both went up, negative 25,000. Now we have an accounts payable, decrease in accounts payable. Decrease accounts payable of 
12,500. So if I look at my cheat sheet, current liability decrease went down. So if our account payable goes, in this case, uh, I think, yeah, if our account payable goes down, that means I spent money. So that makes sense that my cash has to go down and it's gonna go down by the amount that we have here, negative 12.5. And then we had a decrease in salaries payable. These are all the same, increase, increase, decrease, decrease. So salaries payable, oh, I hate it when it goes down like that. It happened to pick the right one. Decrease and negative 3,500. Because the salary paper went down, that means I spent money. I'm ready now to do the final section, which is down here, to say, okay, what is this called? Since this is a positive number, they went ahead and added it for us. We had to do that in our examples. But they took the 41 and then they added in the depreciation and then subtracted out everything else. We got 448, that's a positive number. So th this is net cash provided from operating. So we just gotta make sure you pick the right one. All right, let's check the work for the operating section. And we got everything we needed. Okay, let's go back to our question. Now we are, I wanna go to number six. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I missed anything. It says the answer is not complete. Um, oh, I did miss something right here. Amortization. It's the same thing as depreciation. No money was uh, spent. So I need to go in here and put that in here as well. We had amortization expense. It's gonna be treated just like depreciation because no money was ever spent on amortization. If you remember back a couple weeks ago, and the amount was uh, 4,200. I'm going to add in 4,200 here. Now, if I check my work, it should show that the answer is complete. There we go. Okay, so now let's go to number six. This is going to involve the investing section. Okay, this one we may have to do some outside calculations. Uh, let's, okay, so let's look at this first one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bring up a, a little side thing of, of Excel. So we, if we need to do any journal entries to help visualize it or uh, anything along that that might help, I think on this first one, it could help. It says uh, we have equipment with a book value of 65,000. Original cost of 133 was sold at a loss of 14,000. So on this one, it doesn't even tell us what we brought in in cash. We have to figure it up. So let's figure it up by doing a journal entry and kind of filling it in as we go. All right, so we know we got cash. It tells us that we sold it um, at a loss. It doesn't tell us we sold it for cash, but we didn't, didn't tell us we got anything else. So we're gonna leave this blank for a second. Now we would, we'll always get rid of our accumulated depreciation and you think, well, it doesn't even give me the accumulated depreciation. And it doesn't. But it does tell me the two numbers I need to get to that. It says it costs 133 and it's only worth 65.3 now. So the difference there, that's the amount of accumulated depreciation I had. Now, I don't know if it's a gain or a loss by just looking at it. So I'm gonna come down and do the getting rid of the equipment part. So I'm getting rid of equipment that tells us it had an original cost of 133,000. Now, before I can even get the cash, I can get the cash at this point. Let's, uh, let's think how we wanna do this. Yeah, we can go ahead and do the cash. The cash is actually, um, not as difficult as I was making it out to be, because you can simply look at this and say, okay, it has a book value of 65, three, 
and I sold it at a loss. So it's worth 65.3, but I sold it for even 14,000 less than that. So I bring up, let's bring up my Excel sheet and my calculator. Cash, 65.3 is the, is the uh, what it's worth, but I sold it for 14,000 less. So that tells me I brought in 51,300. And now I can get it, and now I can do the gain or loss. And I wasn't really thinking when I was going through this. And I said, well, we don't know if it's a gain or loss. Yeah, we do. It tells us right here. It was a loss. It was a loss of 14,000. So I can put in the loss here, and then we're going to see if the journal entry works out. Loss on disposal. 14 grand. So if I add up these three debits, it better be 133. And we'll pull it up so we can see the bottom. So we're gonna look down here to see the total. Yep, sum of those is 133. So my debits do equal my credits. And with that, I figured up how much cash needs to go on to my um, statement cash flows. So cash from investing, we had our sale of equipment. Let's see what it tells us here. Yep, cash received from the sale of the equipment. And we're gonna put in that 51,300. Paid 89,000 cash for a new truck. That one's straightforward. I don't really need to even do anything with that one. So we have our new truck. And just put this as a negative because we're losing cash. Sold land costing 154,000 and we sold it and it actually told us the amount of cash. So there was nothing for me to figure. It tells us, yeah, we sold it for a gain. Well, I could have told you that. If I, if it's worth 154 and I brought in 198, yeah, I have a $44,000 gain, but I don't need to put the gain on this one because the gain goes on the operating section. All I wanna do here is show that I sold land and I brought in what it says here, 198. That's the number one. And then our last one, long-term investments. So this is stock, not our stock. This is an investment, meaning I bought stock in another company. And it says what I sold, I sold them for, I sold them for 60,000. That's the number I need. I could care less that I had a gain. That's not important right now. So when I pull up the stock, let's see, the investments, is what it, there we go. Cash received from long-term investments. 60,800. Then my last thing I just need to put on here is look at this and know that it's a positive. So this is going to be net cash provided from an investing section. So net cash provided, don't pick used. And then we check our work. And answer is complete. We got everything correct. So that would be what the investing section looks like. Now we're gonna look at number seven, the next one, and this is gonna be the financing section. Now with this one, they kind of made it a little trickier because on the last one, we used every single item on there. But on this one, they're throwing in a couple curveballs that we don't need. So when we're looking at the financing, we only want long-term liabilities and owner's equity items, that's it. So A, net income of 35,000, that is not a long-term liability or an owner's equity item. So I don't really need that. I don't need that because they give us what our cash dividend is. And they, it's not, if they, if they would have only told us what the retained earnings was changed or anything, then I would have needed it. But with this, I don't need the net income. That's gonna be up there in the operating section. Issued common stock. Yep, that's an owner's equity item. So I'm gonna put here that I issued common stock and it tells me exactly what I brought in. So if I issued it, that means I, I sold the common stock for cash. Paid a cash dividend, so that's easy enough. Paid cash dividend, since it's, I actually paid it, it's a negative. Paid 50,000 to settle our note payable, so we basically just got rid of our note, repay of note, 50,000. Paid 12,000 to uh, acquire treasury stocks. So remember that's us buying it, our own stock back. So to do that, we have to pay money. Purchase treasury stock, so that's a negative. And then purchased equipment for 39,000. That's not a long-term liability. 
because I paid it with cash and that's not an owner's equity. That's, that's an investing item. That's a long-term asset. That doesn't go on here. So I just leave it. Then I look at my total. It's a negative. So that's going to be cash from it uh, used from investing. That cash used from, from, from uh, financing. Investing is the, the, the long-term assets. This is the liabilities and owner's equity. All right, let's check the work. Yep, answer's complete and everything looks good. All right, now the last two items, we're gonna put everything together. Let's go to number 10. And we're going to do number 10 and number 12. Number 10, so we're using the same financial statement for 10 and 12, because you can tell down here they're linked. So that means they're using the same thing. They give us just like how I did in mine, in my examples, except as I told you in the lecture, they do it the other way. They go current year first, past year's lat next, instead of how I did it. So we just gotta be pay careful attention. The only difference is they don't give us the difference out here that I did. So it may be helpful if you took all these numbers and put them into an Excel worksheet and then, but I'm not gonna do that. It's just gonna take us some extra time that I don't wanna do in this video. Uh, if it helps you, you may wanna do that. It just, it's gonna take you a little extra time. They give us, remember the other things we need, the income statement, we gotta see what happened. And then finally, our notes down here. What, what happened with those as well. Now on this one, it's gonna be harder to mark them off so on something like this, it may help to, to print this page so you can mark out things that once you've already done them, like how I did in the Excel sheet, kind of helps keep things nice and neat and so I know what I've used and what I haven't. All right, so with all of this information, we can jump in. It's gonna, it's gonna take us a little bit of time and it's gonna take us to remember what we've done and what we haven't, but I think we can do it. So whenever we do the uh, statement of cash flows with the indirect method, that's what we're using here, the indirect method, we always, always start with our net income. And our net income here is 99,510. So let's go ahead and put that in. Net income, 99,510. Now we're ready to come down to Remember, this is just like what we did in our example number three. It's just we're putting everything together at this point. Okay, so after the net income, we're ready to do those two things that affect the income statement. So we're gonna come up here and see, yep, we've got depreciation expense. And then we have our other, the gain or loss. So this time we have a gain. So let's put in our depreciation expense. It's 58,600. So depreciation expense, 58,600. And remember that's gonna be a, a positive based on um, the little cheat sheet that I provided to you. Whenever we have depreciation, it's a positive. And then we had, it says a gain on a sale. And since it's a gain, that makes our net income go up. So we wanna pretend it didn't happen. So we wanna bring it back down. So we wanna do a negative 2,000. We're ready to do our current assets. So we got our first, remember we leave cash till the very, very end. So our first one that we have to work with is the accounts receivable. And this one's a pretty easy number. We can. You should know this one in your head. 65,000, uh, we, well, we were, remember it goes the other way. We were at 51,000, we've jumped up to 65. So there's a $14,000 increase. So let's remember that $14,000 increase to account receivable. Increase in accounts receivable. And if our account receivable goes up, that means we're not getting the money. So that's a negative. Okay, so if we had this printed off, I would now scratch that one out. Inventory, inventory, this one's not as easy to do in our head, so let's go ahead and bring up the calculator. We were at 86.5. We have dropped to 63.8. So we had a difference of 22.7 decrease. 
inventory down 22.7. So we have a decrease in inventory. And since it went down, that means we didn't replenish. We actually temporarily saved money. So it's gonna be just the opposite. If this one, if we had an increase and it was a negative, this one's a decrease, this one's gonna be a positive. Okay, let's go up. I don't know why it's doing that. Our last uh, current asset is our prepaid expenses. And this one's easy to do in our head. It went from 54 down to 44. So we had a $1,000 decrease. Let's go ahead and enter that one in. We had a decrease in prepaids by a thousand. What that basically is saying is we expensed something, but we didn't pay for it this time. We paid for it in a prior time. So we didn't actually spend cash this this month or this year. So our prepaid expenses, again, they went down. Therefore, if I would have had like an advertising expense for a thousand, I didn't really spend any cash for it this year. I paid for cash for it in the prior year. So this year's statement of cash flows should not have that cash being spent. It would have been on last year's because our prepaid would have went up for that thousand. Okay, so now we've gotten, we've done all the current assets. We're now ready for the current liabilities. And you can see we have three of them, accounts payable, wages payable, and income tax payable. First one here, uh, we can do this one in our head. Account payable went from 30 down to 25. So we went, we had a decrease of 5,000 in accounts payable. So let's show that. Decrease. Accounts payable by 5,000. If my accounts payable goes down, that means I'm paying money. I need to show that. Next one, so I would be marked, I would have marked that one out on a piece of paper or in Excel. Wages payable. It also went down from 15 down to six. So that's a $9,000 decrease. Let's show that decrease in our wages payable. And for that to go down, I had to spend money to my employees to pay them off. So that's a negative. And then finally, we look at the income taxes payable. Income tax went from 38 down to 34. So I paid more money, $400 difference, $400 decrease. So decrease in my income taxes payable by 400. Okay, so we've gotten rid of all of the current assets and current liabilities. They're all marked off. Now we just simply need to say what this final amount is. It's a positive. So we have net cash provided from operator. Net cash provided from operating. Okay, we're ready for the investing section. The investing section, we look to see what's happened. The first thing is we have, well, we only have one investing. We have equipment and then it's corresponding accumulated depreciation. We're gonna see if we need to have that, if we need to know that to, to get some of our answers and we very well may. That's why I have this little um, uh, Excel sheet up. So if we have to do something, we can, we can work it out. Let's see what happened with the equipment. This isn't it, nope. Okay, here's part of it. All right, so let's first, I think what we're gonna do here, since we have more than one thing happening with equipment, we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna put, uh, we could, the equipment had a change. It went from 115, and it ended the year at 124. So we had a $9,000 actual, we had an increase in 9,000. Let's do it the other way. Let's show that it's a positive. Because it is, it's a positive, it went up for the year. 
Now over here, we're gonna explain that difference. And it says the first thing that we have, is, and it's number uh, C, new equipment is acquire, acquired for 50,000, for 57.6. All right, so 57.6 would put us at a bigger number than the 9,000 explanation. So obviously I'm gonna sell something later on as well. So this first part is pretty easy. All we, all we got to do, since it was all paid in cash, is simply come down here and show that uh, cash paid for equipment. And that was the 57.6. And since cash was paid, we put this in negative. And then we go down into my notes. And number D, received cash from the sale of equipment that had cost 48.6, yielding a $2,000 gain. Okay, so this one I think to help explain everything, we're gonna go ahead and need to make a T account. We're gonna need to see what happened in order and, and do the journal entry because there's it's just too much to try to think of in your head. So that's fine, let's make a little uh, T account. Let's do equipment. Uh, we got our plus, we're going to make a real basic one, plus. Yeah, that's just do negative plus plus. And then over here, ah, over here we'll do the accumulated depreciation because we're actually going to need that. And remember that's a um, minus. And it's going to this is fine. Plus, plus. Yes, that's fine. All right, so they started us out. Um, equipment for the year was at 115. That was our beginning. And the accumulated depreciation beginning was 9,000. And then it tells us at the very end of the year, so I'm going to put it down here. Let's give it a couple of room. The ending is at 124 and the ending accumulated depreciation is at 27,000. So these lines here so we know that that is our final. Let's put a thick word. Okay now let's start filling in the T accounts to see how we got there and that's going to help us do our final adjustment to figure up what happened on this sale. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to know. Okay, so our first thing that happened was in the part C in our notes. It says when we bought equipment for 57.6. So when we bought equipment, we have our purchase, 7.6. So if I was having a running total down here, I'm going to be over the 124. My current my current balance is definitely more than 124. It's 172.6. That's what my sum is right here. Now, the other on the on this side over here, accumulated depreciation. When you purchase something, you don't add anything to it, but we do add something right here. That accumulated depreciation includes this depreciation expense. That's one of the reasons it went up. And it says we had depreciation expense of 58600 So I'm going to put the 58600 as the depreciation expense. So now we're way over the 27. So we sold something to get us to that point. Now is where we're at. Now we're at part D. We need to get everything squared away. It says we received cash for the sale of equipment that cost us 48.6. All right, so if I put in the 48.6 here that we got rid of, now if I add all these up, let's test them. If I add this, this, minus what I sold, this better be 124. It is. So I've now explained the equipment, which is good. I still don't know what the cash is. So as we're doing a journal entry, our main journal entry will always look the same when we sell something. We're going to bring in cash, usually, or some account. We're going to get rid of accumulated depreciation. 
we're going to have either a gain or a loss. It's either going to be a debit or credit, and then we're going to have our equipment. Now, we, we know the first part, 48.6. Okay. Now, we don't know how much accumulated depreciation had acquired. Was it just like a year's worth or was it 10 years worth? Well, that's what we got to look at the next part. We've got to look at, we've got to go into our T account. And since nothing else happened, I need to figure up what is this number have to be to get me to 27,000? So we can just do a formula. We can say 9,000 plus this, and then subtract out what my balance is. That has to be what the accumulated appreciation is. And I could have done that here. They could have just said sold equipment, and that's the only other thing that happened. And I, we could have figured this 48,006 out. But with this, this is telling me that I had accumulated depreciation of 40,600. So I'm getting rid of the accumulated. So now my, my, um, my balance will equal. When I add up the two credits, subtracting the debit, it's going to be the balance. It tells me I had a gain of 2,000. Okay, so we have a gain. A gain is always a credit. So gain on disposal of 2,000. Now I can basically backfill and figure up what is my cash have to be because it has to equal my, my two credits together. So uh, we have, it has to be this plus this minus my accumulated depreciation, has to be. So cash brought in had to be, and so that's where this one was a little bit more complicated, $10,000 cash received. Come over here, equipment, equipment sale was uh, 10,000, that's how much money I brought in. And that's all we had for the equipment. I don't think there was anything else we'll check. So C and D are now scratched out. This is not anything. This is going to be part of the direct. E and F are part of the direct. So we don't have anything else for the investing. We're ready to finish out the investing. This is a negative number. So it's going to be net cash used in investing. I got the wrong one. It's used in investing. Okay, now we're ready for the financing. The financing has long-term liabilities and owner's equity. So all we have is note payable and then our common stock and retained earnings. Okay, so let's do note payable first. Let's see what any notes say about the note payable. The note payable, it shows it went from 60 down to 30. So I paid off 30,000. And it tells me exactly that. A $30,000 was paid off. Okay, so we come over here, note payable, cash paid. And since cash was paid, negative 30. Common stock, it doesn't give us any notes on the common stock, so we have to assume that cash was used. I wish it would have on this one. If we go, we're gonna look back down, but it's not gonna show us anything about common stock. It went from 160 up to 220. So that means I sold common stock, 60,000 worth. And again, I come down here, A scratched off. So the only thing left I have is B that I have to worry about. And B um, doesn't say anything about the stock being issued. So we're gonna have to assume it was cash since it doesn't say otherwise. So we had our, let's put here stock, cash received from stock issuance. We got any, so that's a positive sixty thousand. And then finally, we have dividends, and the only thing it tells us here is retained earnings only affected net income and dividends. Okay, so that's where we need to look at, and we can make a little T account again. Maybe do, let's go ahead and just do that. This one won't be as difficult. Actually, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna come down here and make a little T account. 
for retained earnings. So retained earnings is going to look just like the contra account for accumulated depreciation minus plus. And it says that retained earnings started the year beginning at 21.4. And then it ended the year at 33.3. Uh, so that's our bottom line. And what happens to get to retained earnings? And, it's, and it said only things that affected retained earnings was our net income and dividends. So net income, that's going to increase my my retained earnings and net income was 99.5. So my net income, it made us go up by 99.510. So that means then the dividends has to be whatever is left. This plus this minus equals the 33,300. So let's just do it. The 24 beginning plus my net income minus what's left tells me that's how much in dividends uh, were paid. So 90,310. Okay. So it added everything up. Oh, we gotta finish, we gotta do this part here. This is a negative total for the financing. So this is gonna be net cash used from financing. Now it totaled up my operating and then it says, okay, we have 151,000 to play with and I spent some in investing and I spent some in financing. So I still have some left over. So my cash went up by 43.5. Let's see if it really did go up 43.5. If I do the difference here from 87.5 minus the 44 that we started with, 43.5. So let's just fill in our last number. It asks us, what is the beginning cash? It's 44,000 and we ended at 87.5. So the 44 is our beginning, our prior, prior year, 44,000. And when you add our um, difference plus our beginning, our ending works out to be 87.5. So I can I'm be, I'm be pretty assured that I've got about everything right. Maybe if I just typed in a little something wrong, perhaps, but I've got all the numbers right for that to equal out. Let's go ahead and check the work here. And we got the net income. Yep, all looks good. With the statement of cash flows indirect method. All right, the last thing we're gonna look at is the direct method and that's number 12. I'm only gonna do the first part, the part that's different. Um, you can do the rest if you want, but it's gonna look the same as the other part. We're gonna do the cash flows from operating using the direct method. Okay, so just a quick review on the direct method, we're gonna take each income statement item and do them individually and compare them to their balance sheet kind of counterpart and that's where these two are gonna come into play. It's telling us that since we don't have, we only have two expenses, it's saying in these other expenses, it includes your prepaid and your wages. Okay, so wages and everything else is in that other expense. And it's telling us that our inventory is the one that affects accounts payable, the items on credit, so our account payable account. All right, so let's go, let's start working through these. The first thing we do is we start with our sales and we compare our sales. So let's put that in our calculator. 678, now did, our, did, that's, did that amount of cash actually go up or down based on, remember what we have to compare we look at our sales and then we compare it to the AR account. So we go back up here to our AR. Okay, our AR went up by 14,000. So that means I didn't collect everything that I thought of, that I thought I was. So I'm gonna take the 678 and subtract out the amount that my AR went up. So I'm gonna subtract out the 14,000. 
So in cash receipts, I really only got 664,000. So I'm gonna come down here and put cash receipts. Cash uh, received from customers for the 664. All the rest of them are gonna be cash payments. So now I've marked this guy out. We're now ready for cost of goods sold. I'm gonna get out the calculator. Cost of goods sold started at looking like I spent 411,000. But remember now we have to compare that with inventory and the account payable. And I have to do that because it tells us here that purchases for inventory are on credit. So this is where I'm gonna look at the account payable piece and the inventory. Okay, so inventory, it went down for the year. So I actually saved money. I didn't have to replenish it. So I'm gonna, uh, if I saved money, I'm gonna subtract from the amount because I didn't really spend 411,000, which it shows. I saved a little money, so I'm gonna take, take down from the 411 the difference here. And uh, let's, let's take the 411 off for a second and let's do this, I forget what it was. 86.5 minus the 63.8, 22.7, 22.7. So 411 minus the 22.7. That's how much we've actually spent so far. Because again, I didn't replace that inventory so I can take that money back down. The account's payable, let's see what happened here. It actually went down. That means I did spend extra money to help pay on that. So the amount that I spent went back up by 5,000, the difference. So I really spent on inventory through paying off old debt and not replenishing. I spent 393, 300. 393. 300. I'm going to put that in before I forget. Remember that's a negative 393, 300 that I spent on inventory. Okay, so that takes care of that. That's gone. Cost of goods sold. We're now down to depreciation. Remember with the direct method, we do not put in depreciation. We don't need, we didn't do anything with net income, so we don't need to counteract it. We're ready for the other expenses. So, and, and it told, told us down here that the other expenses includes prepaid and wages payable. Okay, so let's, um, other expenses, it's saying upfront, it looks like I spent 67,000. Let's see if I spent a little more or less than that. Prepaids, um, my prepaids went down by a thousand for the year. So I actually saved some money so I didn't really spend 67. I spent 1,000 less than that. I'm at 66. And then I come here to my wages payable. My wages payable went down by 9,000. So I had to pay debt. So I actually had to pay more money. So I'm going to increase this now by 9,000. So starting from that operating expense and doing the, some of the adjustments, I actually paid 75,000 in other expenses. So we come down here, cash paid for other operating expenses, 75,000. Go back up, now we're done with this one. Gain and losses, I can get rid of it. I don't need to adjust for that, no cash was involved. The only thing left is I have income tax expense. Income tax expense says I paid 43,890 as an expense. Let's see if I need to adjust that by whatever's in the payable. Uh, income tax payable, it went down by 400. So that means I spent an extra $400 in income tax than what the, just the expense shows. So I'm gonna put on here 44,290. Negative. Paid from income taxes. 
And I do believe that is the last one, 151, 410. Let's see if I got the entire uh, operating section correct. Let's go ahead and put this guy in. This was a positive number. So this has got to be net cash provided uh, operating. And then I could go back to number 10 as well and check this number against it and see if it, they're both 151. They should be. Let's check. And we got that correct. So that is the operating section for the direct method. All right, with that, we are through with chapter 12. We have one lesson left, chapter 13, and we will get to that at the beginning of next week and we in our final week as well.